I'm Tom Bowling, and I'm here to share with you the Berry Patch Collection from Pioneer Imports and Wholesale. And as you can see, it, when you look at all this range of color, it just says berry. And we start with the white, we go to the medium, the more intense pink, and then we even get down into the darker, more expressive colors of Berry Patch. So I'm going to start with my container here, and it too has that blush coloration that just marries right in as well. And normally when I do a, a floral styling, I tend to start at the outside and work my way in. However, in this particular composition, I'm going to go ahead and begin more into the middle. So I'm going to establish my height at this point. And, and I'm going to bring um, the flowers forward and upward. So they're at different levels and they have kind of their own growth habit there, which actually looks quite lovely. Then I'm going to come in and do some basing work with the hydrangea. And again, the basing means it's close to the base. So by taking the stem and bending it, creating a hairpin to do my insertion, that way it stays in place and I don't have to worry about gluing anything in or uh, picking it in. This works out quite well. Now you'll notice as I put these together that this, the coloration is identical. So I want to break that up just a little bit by including some of the pinks and some of the whites as well. So I have the hydrangea in and they're more in a triangular pattern in here. So it gives me um, areas of interest to work into. So starting with my bush here, I'm going to dissect that, give me a few um, placements in there, working out of that. And I like doing the bush because it gives me um, a selection of different materials, different sizes, different colors uh, available. Works out quite well. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm going to cut out a few and then put that bush away. Normally what I would do would be to take that and then create maybe a smaller styling or a wreath accessory, a wall piece, something that will go along with that. And what I want to do is pretty much use up the material so it's not laying around and creating an inventory challenge. So once again, staying with the threes, and again, not, not that we have to stay with three. Um, somebody asked me that not too long ago when I was doing a program, and I was using um, even numbers. I was doing twos and fours, and they were like, Tom, I thought we had to do in, in um, odd numbers. It's like, mm, no, not really. I mean, you can. There's nothing wrong with that. But you use the amount of materials that you need to get the job done. So as you're looking at it, assessing, you know, twos work well, threes, fives, sevens, etc. And you can see how this is starting now to develop. And the fact that we're using the foliage from the bush and the natural materials makes it very cost effective to use. Let's see what else. Oh, my favorite, the Helleborus. Absolutely stunning. The tonation on here gives me the depth and the interest. So I'm going to remove a few of these off of the, off of the bush here. And like I said, I like the way that these dance. They just kind of wiggle. It's not hardwired. I mean, they are wired, but it doesn't have that real stiff look to it. And I especially like that as, as I'm doing my work. Now you'll notice I'm giving that material, the hellebore, some movement into the line so it doesn't look so static. Because when flowers grow, they don't grow straight or they don't grow straight out. They, they wander, they, they react to the sun, and that's exactly what I'm trying to, to um, mimic in my floral design. So as I put these together, Let that droop over the edge because as the flower would grow, it would hang over and then grow back up itself. So that's what we're doing with our, our materials that, that break over the edge. Now along with that, I have these phenomenal sweet pea. And I want to use those in this collection as well. And these are a great uh, item for you just to stock. You can, they're, they're already bundled actually. 
um, and you can tie those on to a basket handle or put those into a, uh, a, a planter or something along that line. Use them as a bundled material, which is kind of fun um, just for an add-on. Put a little ribbon treatment with that and then go forward. Now I've got to be mindful of the fact that these are a little large um, for, the, for the styling that I'm creating here. So I'm going to cut them down and actually it gives me multiple insertions. Every now and then you get a one that just doesn't quite need to be in there. And so I'm going to put that aside and that'd be great for some permanent corsage work later. sweet pea there. I'm coming over to the opposite side to give that, bring that texture right on over. Let's take a look, see what we need here. It needs a little bit of white just to break up all that pink. And so with the, um, the daisies that we have here, that's going to be the, the solution. And again, not that real stiff wire to it. it has a lot of motion and movement. So I can manipulate that and massage that stem, give it some interest. And I like those daisies, they're, cut. they're a happy flower. Daisies are a happy flower. So I want to make sure I'm going to use those throughout the composition, giving a little bit more of the um, completed ombre look. And ombre is where we go from light to dark, or dark to light, depending. Um, but it, it goes, you know, in steps. And so we have the lightest being the white here, the medium tones as we talked about earlier, and then all the way down to the darker um, hydrangea that gives us that wide range of, of coloration here. So ombre, still very fashionable, very popular, great look. And berry collection is ready to greet the spring and summer. Mm -hmm.